What's good with the YouTube? It is your boy Vaughn, and as you guys can see by the title, we are back with a new video for you guys today. And in this one, we're gonna be reacting to the three nun horror stories animated. I know that the Nun 2 recently just came out and we're getting closer to Halloween. So when I came across this, I was like, hey, this looks kind of creepy and it's animated because I, you know, I like animated stuff. So I was like, hey, why not react to this? Let me know in the comment section down below if this is something you guys would like to see me further react to in the future. And as always, the original video will be in the description down below. And while you are down there, if you would like to follow me on any of my social medias, I would greatly appreciate it. My kick link will be down there as well for the live streams. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna dive right into this. Let's get it. Let's see what this is hitting for. Okay, all right. The 1992 Creepy Nun, okay. I grew up very religious. My entire family was incredibly invested in the church and my parents made sure that I grew up the same way. So I guess it's no surprise that I became a nun as soon as I had the chance. Well, I was still pretty young. So it was more like an apprentice. A but male I was nun? Practicing to become a I'm not used to I seeing really male nuns. I really looked up to an older nun and priest in the church. They were basically my teachers. They mentored me and showed me how I was supposed to behave. Of course, it wasn't all great. The nun that I looked up to was very mean and had a bit of a temper. She usually ended up taking it out on me, since I was the youngest around. She treated me like a slave and made me do everything around the convent. I had to cook, clean, do laundry, basically everything that the other nuns hated to do. I worked all day and pretty much all night too. Like it was a double shift. Most of the time, I felt so more he was like a slave than a nun. I never practiced any praying or other studies with the rest of them. I was left to do the chores. It got very bad. The older nun would yell at me. I'm not gonna lie. It's probably better off that he didn't practice none of those prayers with them. Me all the time, even if I did everything right. She would always find something to complain about. Either I hadn't scrubbed the floors enough or the bed sheets were too wrinkled. It was pretty ridiculous. I kind of just sucked it up and did what I was told. Hey, yo! I kind of just sucked it up and did what I was told. Oh my god. I didn't have much of a choice. Every night, when I was finally allowed to stop working, Pause. I would cry myself to sleep. I regretted ever becoming a nun, but I felt trapped. I couldn't just leave the convent. My family would never believe the reasons I gave them. I didn't know what to do. It went on like that every day for a while. I knew I was being treated unfairly. So one day I decided to address the matter with the priest, privately. But when I told him what was going on, he just ignored me and told me to do as I was told. He even <laughs> yelled at me and told me I was defying God. I went into a depression after that. I didn't see how things would get better. I just cleaned and did my chores like I was told, barely functioning. I continued to cry every night. Then one day, after being yelled at by the nun again, I heard her talking about it with the priest in another room. But what was the most disturbing part was that I heard them laughing about it. They sounded like psychos. It was as if they had been using me and laughing about it behind my back the whole time. I was so upset. I decided to confront them about it. I barged mm. into the room and found them standing there, talking normally. I stood there and looked at them awkwardly and they stared back at me. Sorry, I thought I heard laughing in here. Then, suddenly the nun charged at me and started yelling oh. like crazy. Get out of here! You have no right to be here! Get back to work, scum! She tried to go. <laughs> She's talking crazy. Get back to work, scum. But I screamed and broke free. It was terrifying. I had no idea what she was going to do to me. I ran out there as fast as I could and got back to cleaning. Everything went on just the same as always for the next few days. But one night, as I was mopping the floor, I heard noises in the convent. It was scary as hell. The place That's loud was usually dead bro. silent at this time. I noticed that the noises were coming from the same room that the priest and nun had been in before. Is that blood? I was scared out of my mind, but for some reason I had to know what was going on. I slowly approached the door, trying to make as little Why you always gotta go look? Why do I, bro? I'm not walking that direction. As soon as I hear something, I don't even care what it is. I don't want to see what it looked like. It still hard my black ass out the door. So I put my ear to the door. Out the window! What I heard freaked me out. It sounded like they were getting intimate or something on the other side. I was possessed by this urge to see what was going on. So I opened the door and slowly peeked in. Walking in on demons having sex is crazy. The priest and nun were kissing. I screamed out of shock. 
It was illegal and unrighteous for them to be doing what they were doing. They were a nun and a priest. I couldn't believe my eyes. The pair of them charged at me, looking insane. I screamed and tried to get away, but they were too quick. They grabbed me and pinned me down. I couldn't break free. I kept screaming, hoping that someone would come. Help! Someone! Help me! Then, the priest pulled out a roll of duct tape and taped my mouth shut. I couldn't make a sound. Next, they tied my arms and legs together so that I was completely helpless. I had never been more terrified. They picked me up and carried me between them, and took me outside and began to walk towards the water well. I was sobbing and struggling to talk through the tape. I begged them to let me go, but they wouldn't listen. When we got it's to over. the well, they lifted me up and threw me inside. I lay there at the bottom of the well, bruised and trapped. My hands and legs tied and my mouth shut. I was stuck in the darkness with nothing but water and rat. Bro. At this point, it's over. There's no coming back. I'm giving up at this point. It's all around me. I screamed again as I looked up and, it's and dark. saw the nun and the priest staring down at me. <laughs> they were laughing with demonic faces and taunting me from above. <laughs> I had no idea how I ever looked up to them. I knew this was the end. No one would ever find me down here. I cried softly to myself in total defeat. <laughs> nay, nay, that means no. Nay. The nun in the well was found 28 years. Oh. They starved to death down there? Oh my god. On March 27, 1992, a young nun known as Sister Abaya was found decomposing in a well in a convent compound. With no credible leads, the case has seen several twists and turns during almost three decades. These include reinvestigations, allegations of evidence tampering, witnesses turning hostile, and a petty thief becoming the key to convicting the accused. After further investigation, the court then convicted a nun named Sister Sefi and a priest named Father Thomas Kotor for the young nun's demise and destruction of evidence. It was wow. alleged that the pair committed their heinous acts after Sister Abaya came across them engaged in illicit intimate activity. Alright, let's see if the next one gets scarier. The Nun Nightmare. Come on. Bring it, bring it, come on. Kind of a storm comes through at one in the morning. <sighs> this one's different. This one's already different in, the an in terms of like animation. <laughs> oh, stupid thing! Oh. <laughs> All right, this guy got anger issues. Okay, hold up. He bipolar. What in the world? We'll see Can if you bipolar when it does pop up on that hours? ass. What? No, it must be broken. Oh, oh, sure, Mother Mary will wake me up if I oversleep. <sighs> Can I catch a break? Who's calling me at this hour? Hello? Who is this? Hello? What are you saying? You sound like a zombie on the phone, kind of bro. Prank. It's not <laughs> funny. You're disturbing a priest, you know that? If you did this to Mother Mary, she'd get you with the ruler so hard you'd have square marks on your ass. <laughs> He's talking crazy. <laughs> Stop that! Enough of this. Don't call this number again. <laughs> they got a scream Those on the phone and shit. more stimulation. Bored and sleepless is never a good combination. I'd better get down there and see which one of them is misusing that phone. <sighs> huh. The storm must have knocked out the power. Well, at least those kids can't cause trouble anymore. <gasps> oh no! What are they doing to the sisters? Why these rascals have it coming now? I see why they said POV. We're watching it from his POV. Just like you guys are watching me from Bond's POV. 
Or do I need to get something implanted so you guys can actually see from my point of view? I don't think this is an orphan's doing anymore. Me too. Are you moving? Oh my god. So what is it that you think you were a an evil hand to pull one of your sisters? Bestow upon me the power to bring them to justice. Yes. Ah, oh, hell no. Hell no. Sister Sarah, what's happened to you? Dear God. Sister Sarah, you've been possessed. <laughs> oh, hey, yo! Sister, stop this! Don't give in! This Ain't no way you sitting there carrying a conversation Please. with a motherfucker Keep looking like word. this, bro. In the name of the Father. Mother and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, I compel you, Satan, to return Sister Sarah to the hands of God or face his holy wrath, you foul and treacherous creature. Be gone! Be gone from the house of God and return to the depths of hell whence you came! Sister Sarah? Oh my gosh, bro. <laughs> what was that, Pennywise? <laughs> Stay Run. away from me, demon! Uh, now he got wheels all of a sudden. <laughs> You don't even know where you ran it. You just ran into a, a, a black wall. Like, I ain't gonna lie, he getting loose right now. This loading screen ain't moving fast enough, though. <laughs> hey, there we go. Resident Evil vibes going through the door. I'll never open a door for Satan unless it leads him straight back to hell. Please, Father, let me in. Take this demon out of me, please. Hey, yo. I want you to save me. It hurts. It's hey. like my soul. <laughs> Bro, whoever the voice over is. <laughs> Please, I need you to save me. It hurts. It hurts. It's like my soul is burning. I can't take it anymore. No, it's a trap. I know it is. I'm not you even like scared. To be I'm, honest, I'm just like weak right I know now. You, Satan. I shall repel you with the words of God. <laughs> Okay, now you're getting a little too close to personal. Hold up. Ah, somebody help me! Help! Ah. This is one of the most disturbing, creepiest stories on the internet by far. Mm. The animation was inspired by a real-life case that happened over 300 years ago at a covenant in Sicily. A nun named Sister Maria claims to have been possessed by the devil. According to the story, Sister Maria woke up one morning in 1676 covered in ink, having spent the night writing letters. It was believed that she had been screaming and fainting while writing the notes, which she said the devil dictated to her. She claimed the possession was part of the devil's plan to turn her against God. Below is the image of that letter, which was later translated to bizarre messages rebuking against religion and things of that nature. Mm -mm -mm. Story, story number three, Terrence Nicholson. The N uncle. The nun. By the time somebody turns 21, they're supposed to be going. I do like how all these animations have looked very different. Going through college, and working a job, <laughs> hanging out with friends, going out, doing things, and in general, just living life and making memories. As for me, however, my 21st birthday only a few months away, I don't have the luxury of any of those things. All I have is a boy in a godforsaken church. I was always a troubled girl, even before ending up here. For the most part, I'm extremely shy and introverted, but only because I've been conditioned to be that way. Over the course of my entire life, 
Whenever I acted out or did anything with even the slightest amount of energy or spontaneity, my parents would freak out and call me crazy, and lock me in my room with nothing to do until I calmed down. Every kid throws tantrums at some point, but when I did, I was treated like I'd been possessed by the devil. Once I hit puberty and my temperament became worse, my parents didn't understand that this is what happens to girls at a certain age, so they condemned me as a problem that would ruin their lives and reputations. They sent me off to camps for troubled teens and Bible camp and a dozen other camps, all to no avail. Every time I got home, they were disappointed that it didn't work because I hadn't changed. Of course, nothing was actually wrong with me. They were just delusional. By the time I was 16, they were ready to completely abandon me. They shipped me off to go live and work with my uncle, who was a priest at a Catholic church. On Dang, so she ain't get no love from her parents whatsoever since she was a baby. On the other side of the so state. Then they moved somewhere else without telling me, and to this day never responded in any way when I try to contact them. It's all the same, though because I hate them and wouldn't want to see them anyway. I've been living in the church for a few years now, and the only benefit is that I'm finally out from underneath my parents' thumb. My uncle was okay, I guess. He's pretty absent in my day-to-day -day life, except for making me clean everything in the church and do all his chores like I'm some personal maid or janitor. It's his way of making me pay rent, according to him. If it were just him in charge of me, I could easily sneak out at night and have an actual life, but I can't, even after having my childhood ruined. My adulthood is starting she wanna to rock that nigga right now. I don't have any friends. I'm not in school. I don't have a real job. And I'm not even on track to become an actual nun, even if I wanted to be one, which I don't. I'm basically a slave. And my master is this awful, ghoulish nun living in the convent who's headed out for me since day one. I was never allowed to watch the movie, but I've seen enough of the commercials to know how to perfectly describe her. She's the nun from The Conjuring. Her eyes are all sunken and her teeth are rotten to the stumps. And she has an obsessive complex with degrading and punishing anyone below her on the totem pole. She's a real life witch if I've ever seen one. And the worst part is, I can't escape from her grasp. She's the one who gives all the orders I have to obey, no matter mm. what they are. When I first arrived a few years ago, hey, yo. <laughs> years ago Back she used to beat me so badly I couldn't walk. She was convinced oh, that it was some kind of impure deviant just because I had a single spaghetti strap top in my wardrobe. In order to survive, I tried to get used to her rules and demands over the years. I've learned to avoid some of her punishments, except for the ones that she's hard set on doling out no matter what I do. For the most part, she rules the church with an iron fist. Even though she's a nun and she's supposed to be subservient to the priest, who just happens to be my uncle, he's always been of no help to me. Anytime I brought a complaint to him about that wretched soulless creature they call a nun, he just brushes it off. Shh, just do as you're told. Even worse, after he walked away, he would go right around the corner and snitch on me to my nemesis, getting me in even more hot water. Every day as I got That's older, tough. the treatment was harsher, and the escape routes more impossible. It is truly a constant waking nightmare. The other night, I was alone in the congregation area, tasked with cleaning the hundreds of pews on my hands and knees with nothing but a toothbrush, a rag, and a bucket of water. I wasn't allowed to have all the lights on either, only half of them, which made it Dang! Dimmer than usual. The she really a slave for real. in the congregation area. And being tortured by a possessed nun. That's crazy. Long after everyone was supposed to be in bed. I'm taking and myself out after one shut. day. I stood up and looked around, but I couldn't see anything except a tiny bit of moonlight through the stained glass above the altar. A deep sense of dread arose in my stomach as I began to feel like I wasn't alone. That's mm. when I saw her lurking from across the pews around a corner. Who mm. knows how long she'd been watching me. But now in the pitch black lighting, she looked even more demonic than ever. Her eyes were almost glowing. I shrieked in terror as a chill ran through my entire body. Ah, what are you doing? Why did you turn off the lights? <laughs> Stop it! Why because I'm gonna get you, bitch! She didn't even respond to me like a human being. She just laughed. The thought occurred to me that I should just run straight out the front door and never come back. That I'd rather take my chances with the outside world than spend another second in there with her. But by then, it was already too late. She charged forward, moving faster than I ever thought she could. By the time I turned around and started to run, she had already caught up to me. She grabbed me and yanked me to the floor, where she pinned me down. Ah! Get off of me, you psycho! Let me go! I thought I was about to be at the mercy of the witch, when I suddenly saw my uncle appear behind her. Please, help me! She's gone crazy! But then... A wicked smile went from ear to ear across my uncle's face. He knelt down beside me and covered my mouth with his hand. Shh. Just do as you're told.
Rest in peace, bruh. The story was inspired by an incident regarding a woman named Trish, who was groomed and tormented when she was younger by a nun named Sister Eileen Shaw. Here's an image of the nun. Trish claimed that the nun used to supply her with alcohol and narcotics, which is absolutely horrific considering the circumstances. But what makes things even worse was how her uncle, who was a priest to the nun in the same church, enabled the nun and himself to do the horrific things they did to the victim. This went on for a number of years, and since then, multiple people have come out with their own allegations. After filing a lawsuit, That's the congregation bro. paid the victim an out-of-court settlement for her suffering, and the case has since been a dark tale on the internet. Hey, yo! That was pretty dope. Okay, a little creepy. That makes me want to go watch The Nun 2 now, because I know it just came out, like I said recently, at the beginning of the video. The second one was probably my favorite one, just because of how the animated look, but also, like, some of the stuff they were saying, there's some be pause moments in this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my eye out for more animated horror stories, because it is Halloween time coming up, right around the corner, we're already more than halfway through this month, so yeah. It's going to be here faster than you guys know it. So if you guys enjoyed this, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, the original video will be in the description. And while you guys are down there, if you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, I will greatly appreciate it. Kick link down below as well. And that does it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one. We are out. Peace.